yeah, I think the sky's the limit even further than that for him. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because I mean, he like the stuff that he's doing, you know, definitely you know inspires me listening to it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, man, if I was when I was twenty. You know, in college, how we all wanted to be Drake and Lil Wayne. Yeah. Like, he, like, to be in some of those spaces like that, I mean, a lot of us would have killed to be in, like, For sure. a space like that. For sure. So, yeah. um, but to his credit, he, he went and did it. Yeah. You he know? took those risks. And, yeah. and every time there was a barrier, right? Every time there was an right. obstacle, he found a way around it. Yep. And then luck. Luck and timing, too. Yeah. I think luck, that's another timing. thing, too. Like, he, he talked about, oh, man, I, I. There were moments where, like, I'm like, okay, this is it. I, I pushed as far as I can go. Right. And then God, the universe, whatever, whatever, whatever yeah. a person <laughs> wants to call it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Intervenes and is like, oh, now that person that was just stopping you got called by somebody else or, yeah. you know, had to be somewhere else. I had to go do this or run and go do that. And then he had another opportunity to go another step further. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. What was it? Uh, Pitbull said, you know how I keep getting lucky? I work hard. <laughs> Hit him with the intro, cuzzo. All right, as always, man, welcome back to the Electives Podcast. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We got another episode for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about a couple different things, but first off, we're going to talk about freedom, right? What does freedom mean in today's society? What does freedom mean to us now? Right. Um, there's different definitions. There are different perspectives on what freedom means. Obviously, we live here in America, so you have the freedom to... You have free will. You have freedom of speech. Right. Um, you know freedom to pretty much do whatever you want do whatever right? yeah uh but at the same time one of the concepts that i think um i've been thinking about a lot recently is how do i create or continue to create a space where i can truly do and have the things that i want to have in life and that doesn't mean to have some extravagant life where i need a mansion or anything like that but how can i continue to put myself uh, my friends, my family, my loved ones in a position where we can all um, live a life of free of maybe not necessarily debt because I don't want to say, you know, because debt yeah. can be used in a, in a positive way. But I think you can, yeah, like can kind of get where, where yeah. I'm going with it, you know. It almost si sounds like you're talking about like time, like yeah, freedom ultimately. to get your time back. Exactly. Precisely. I guess, Precisely. you know, like if you kind of look at it, freedom because that'll give you freedom to have with your family your friends or people who you want to be with. That's um, really what freedom is. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I definitely get what you're saying. It almost, you know, it brings, brings you back to Justin's episode, mm -hmm. um, how he felt like leaving college, you know, where he was like, this is the first time in my life where, you know, nothing's, my life's not outlined anymore. Like the right. outline has stopped. Right. Technically. But for some people, the outline still continues because you're mm -hmm. supposed to, what, get a job, mm -hmm. you know, go to work, yeah, and have uh, a family, yeah, have married. a family, get married. So that's buy technically a house, yeah. right, buy a house. Like that's the outline that's after college, right? But for him, it stopped, and then he chased. You know, he wanted to feel free too, mm -hmm. you know, and he ended up moving mm -hmm. to chase that freedom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it. For sure. And it, and is freedom kind of like living on that uh, that fine line of uh, of risk, but also being, um, I guess, managing risk. Right. Right. Because for Justin to take that risk and to move all the way down to Miami, that's not that's not moving. Moving to a different city is is a big deal. Right. Right. But moving to an entirely another state is a whole nother yeah, that's a different level, man. Yeah, it is. It really, really is. You know. Yeah. So, like, so let, let so what would you say, Cuzzo? You, what what freedom or type of freedom? I know you mentioned time, getting back with your family, but how do you feel you're gonna be able to accomplish that and get that freedom? I I think honestly, man, I just have to. There's there's certain areas of my life where I'm more disciplined yeah. than others, right? Yeah. I think the concept of what discipline actually means and my understanding of it has really grown over the years. The harder I am on myself and as far as being disciplined with like, because one of my strengths is like I, I make sure that I go to the gym. 
right. you know, because I understand how important it is not just for me to feel good, but for for my psyche, for my mental health, right? Yeah. And making sure that I that I really, really, really look out for me when it comes to that. But then discipline when it comes to your finances, right? You know, and creating creating um, a space, man, where now your money can start working for you. And I would say that that's probably where a lot of people struggle, you know, and especially in in if you if you've never been taught how to deal with money, how to handle money, how to properly manage money, yeah. it can be extremely overwhelming. Yep. It can it can make a person feel anxious. It can. Money's a tool, yeah, but it can also be terrifying for some oh, yeah. people. You know. So would you say, uh, the only way to really capture that freedom mm. is to make more money, mm. or do you think freedom can be accomplished with less? I think it's subjective to the person. To be honest with you, because some people, I guess, ultimately, you have to ask yourself, what do you really want out of life? Now, if you're a person that if a mansion is going to make you happy, yeah, then, OK, you're going to need to make enough money to have a mansion. But right. if you're a person who is OK with living in a in a one bedroom apartment. Right. And you're just as happy, if not happier than someone that has a mansion. Right. then hey, who's to say what's right or wrong? So each person has to kind of take a look in the mirror and really ask themselves, what is it that I want out of life? Do I want, you know, these materialistic possessions or am I really chasing time and happiness? Right. No, yeah. It's a tough question to ask, man. Yeah, it is, man. Because, you know, like going back to Justin, you know, I I remember graduating college, too. You know, you're you're broke. You Mm -hmm. ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for him to move to Miami and um, chase that freedom Mm -hmm. with nothing. It's almost like I wonder. I, I guess there would have been something to ask him. Like, did you feel feel more free in that moment when you're on the plane, you mm-hmm. land, you got nothing, you're just mm-hmm. in Miami trying mm-hmm. to figure it out, mm-hmm. or did you feel more free when you graduated college and you were working a job mm. and I'm and driving seventy miles to his job? Yeah, you know, where you know, basically a twelve hour day. You know, I mean, I think he would say he probably felt more free in Miami with nothing. Yeah. Than he did when he had a job here. Yeah. And like something structured. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something to be said about that because I, I think that he learned so much more from being in that position where he had nothing. Right. And he was just literally on a daily basis trying to just figure it out. How am I going to get to the next day, let alone the next? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I can't even think a week or a month out yeah. right now. Like, I just need to think about today and tomorrow, you know? Yeah. But, um, in those moments, though, and one thing I've learned from Justin and listening to him, and you know, you and I, we we briefly talked about this, uh, even even after his episode, but he's got the kind of mindset, man, that you love to see in a young person, yeah. right? He's focused, he's driven, and you know that no matter what he does, whatever he puts his mind to, he's going to be successful, right? You know, he's gonna be relentless when it comes to chasing after his dreams and his goals, yeah. you know, and it's people like that, man, that you root for. Yep. People like that that inspire you, that make yeah. you want to go a little harder. And so I'm, I'm really interested to see, man, where he goes and where he ends up because he's going to do big things. Man. Oh, I can, yeah. I can feel it. Yeah, I think the sky's the limit even further than that for him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because, I mean, he like the stuff that he's doing, you know, definitely, you know, inspires me listening to it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just like, man, if I was t- when I was 20 – you know, in college, how we all wanted to be Drake and Lil Wayne. Yeah. Like, he, like, to be in some of those spaces like that, I mean, a lot of us would have killed to be in, like, For sure. a space like that. For sure. So, yeah. um, but to his credit, he, he went and did it. Yeah. You he know? took those risks. And, yeah. and every time there was a barrier, right? Every time there was an right. obstacle, he found a way around it. Yep. And then luck. Luck and timing, too. Yeah. I think luck, that's another timing. thing, too. Like, he, he talked about, oh, man, I, I, there were moments where, like, I'm like, okay, this is it. I, I pushed as far as I can go. Right. And then God, the universe, whatever, whatever, whatever yeah. a person <laughs> wants to call it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Intervenes and is like, oh, now that person that was just stopping you got called by somebody else or, yeah. you know, had to be somewhere else. I had to go do this or run and go do that. And then he had another opportunity to go to a, another step further. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. What was it? Uh, Pitbull said, you know how I keep getting lucky? I work hard. And it's you true, know, and, bro. And that, yeah, I mean, it's, 
it sounds complicated, but it's really not. No. You know, it's like, no. oh, well, you're always, you know, you're always getting lucky. But I mean, if the harder I work, the more hours I put in. Yep. The lucky I might, luckier I might get. Yep. Which yeah. ties into freedom, right? Achieving right. freedom. You know, the harder that we work, man, and the, and the smarter that we work, then we're able to put ourselves in positions, man, where you do have more time to do right. whatever it is that you want to do. Right. You know? And I almost think like it's, you know, when you think about it, you had the, like even the grind mm. may not may not feel like you're free because mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure you know you're strapped. You, let's say we'll just use you know Justin again for an example, mm-hmm. or um or even us or anybody who's doing a podcast. Mm-hmm. You know you're here. Mm-hmm. This is your time. You know you have to put in this work now. Mm-hmm. And I think people don't really like think about that. They just want to be able to wake up and be like, I'm free today. You're you right. know, unless you hit the lotto, right. you really got to hit the lotto to wake up like that. But, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but otherwise, otherwise, man, in order to get that, you got to put in some type of work. And then I think that's where people start to feel trapped because the grind feels like that, I think, initially yeah. until you break, break out of it. And now things just start flowing. True. You true. know. But we also live in the age of like instant gratification, right? Everybody wants everything. That's terrible, man. Like that. Yeah. You know, they, no one wants to take the time to build something. Right. Right. And let it grow organically. Right. Um, so that it can stand the test of time. Right. You know, it's just like, hey, I want it now. I want, I want, I want to be viral. I want this. Right. I want that. I want the house. I want the kids. I want the whatever right. it is. You know, it seems right. like we live in a society, man, where people think if they snap their fingers it'll happen and it just doesn't work that way. No. It just doesn't work that way. No, you got to plant the seeds first. Mhm. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to plant them. Mm-hmm. Water them. Mhm. And you know something too, man, I think that that goes hand in hand with that is um and I'll use myself for example. The moment you start holding yourself to a different level of accountability, yeah, in your life, that's when things truly start to change. Yeah. But in order to start holding yourself accountable, you have to have some serious conversations within yourself. Right? Yeah. Now, whether that be your finances, yep. whether that be your health, yep. whether that be with your job, your relationships, yep. you got to constantly keep checking in with yourself and making sure that you're covering these bases. Yeah. Now, if for whatever reason you're not covering one of those bases and you feel like you're lacking in one of those areas, that's OK. Yeah. It's not a death sentence. No. Nah. No, it's not. You know, and I think that's something too, man, is like if you, if you're struggling in any of those areas, it's not the end of the world. Don't right. think that it's the end of the world. But what can you do and how can you put together a plan right. that's digestible for you that you can chop up and be able to say, okay, rather than trying to climb this this mountain, Mount Everest in one day, right? how can I just take one step forward today, another yeah. step forward tomorrow, and yep. continue and go on and so forth? Yep. No, yeah, and it's like, I mean, Justin left this other this other thing that he said was he loved winning so much mm-hmm. that he fell in love with practice. Yeah, and I mean, it that applies, you know, not just only in sports but outside of that. Like, in order to get better at this game of life, you have to practice it. Like, what are you what are you doing to get better? Mm-hmm. You can't just go to sleep and wake up and dream about it. I mean, you can't can't do that Mm-mm. so um i took that away from justin too man it's like every day you got to be practicing something whatever whatever mm-hmm. the case may be mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know so um and that's if you like winning but yeah. if you don't keep doing what you're then, doing yeah just keep doing what you're doing <laughs> man i mean there, there ain't nothing, wrong, nothing with wrong with it no, nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with it, it. we there's all make choices and you you know everybody's got their own road but yeah but then you can't complain either right <laughs> you can't you can't have it you can't have it that way you can't have you can't have your your cake and eat it too as they say yeah you can't and i don't like cake so surprisingly <laughs> I, don't, I don't eat cake man no i don't i eat cake but i don't like frosting oh i'm not a big fan of frosting so normally what i do is i just scrape the frosting off the top oh and, and then just eat the yeah, the cake part yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i don't know what it is man i could have like one little bite but that's it since Fro- I was eight years old. It's the frosting is too sweet, man. Yeah, I think it's way too sweet. For me, for me. Unless yeah. it's like the which I've had like the whip the whip uh frosting. I mean that's a little lighter. Oh, it's but a little lighter. Even then sometimes I'm like, nah. Yeah. But, no, I hear you, man. I hear you. But uh with with all that, like I think the biggest 
the biggest downfall for everybody is their distractions. Yeah. yeah. And people failing to identify mm. what the distractions are. Mm. Because some people will have, um, will feel like they have their, whatever it is under control. Right. You know, but the second that something happens, it's not because of your distractions that you make an excuse for it. Mm. So you avoid what the distractions is. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's that's a huge part mm-hmm. in um, trying to achieve success or the freedom that you talk about getting your time back mm-hmm. because you're occupying your time with mm-hmm. too many distractions. Who mm-hmm. who's uh, Rakia said that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rakia said that you're at you're at the cubicle mm-hmm. and you really? get 20, 40 minutes probably throughout your day and you're over here. Chit chatting, you know, chit chatting, doing, you know, yeah. wasting your time basically, yeah. or you could be doing something else with that time. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true, man, and and that's I think, you know, and I and I give you credit, and I and I've said this to you before, but the way that you lock in, you know, is different than most people, you know, and you have yeah. that gift, and yeah. whether it came from just from when we've been younger, or when it came starting a family and having yeah. to understand like. This is a different level of responsibility, right? And I have to set the tone, right? I have to right. set the tone for my family. I have to set the tone for my children, regardless of whatever it was. I mean, and I'm sure you could allude to it, but wh- oh, yeah, whatever it was right. that that flipped that switch for you, yeah. you haven't turned back since. Yeah, so, yeah. Like I, I would say for me was, um, I my fear of of losing. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I went away to school, my biggest fear was coming back you know mm-hmm. kind of like what justin talked about mm-hmm. how he had to come back home mm-hmm. and it wasn't a failure to him mm-hmm. you know but he was only here for a couple months right but for me to not make it through school and come back mm-hmm. that was my biggest fear bro mm-hmm. like i i was not about to come back and have anybody have anything to say ah. about me not making it ah. through school so okay. from there i locked in there mm-hmm. And then, then it was about in college, trying to figure out post college. What was it? What, what am I supposed to do after college? Mm-hmm. You know, and and uh, it took a while to figure out. Obviously, I had my own distractions. Go, you know, coming out at twenty years old, mm-hmm. so that was tough. Mm-hmm. But I never lost sight of the goal, even though I, my distractions might have veered me off. The only way I got back on track was. I was like, man, this is what you're supposed to be trying to get, mm-hmm. you know, like, or, or, or don't. Right. You know, it was kind of like, I was real harsh with myself. Like, I was yeah. just like, it's either you do this or this is what you got. Yeah. And I was, I just didn't like the alternative. So I was like, well, then whatever I got to do to do it is what I'll do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. it, it, and you just haven't looked back. Since. I just haven't looked back since. And, and I haven't, I haven't really turned it off up until, um, now where it's kind of like more more so like now i know where my focus has to be so Mm. like you know in my 20s i tried a bunch of stuff Mm. tried a bunch of things because i didn't know what was going to work i didn't know what i liked i didn't know you know i had to had to try it all you know you have to oh yeah Yeah, you know and then now it's like more locked in onto onto what it is that i like doing Mm -hmm. and what i see is working Mm -hmm. And, and what works for you. And what works you for know, me. Yeah, you know yeah. what works for you. Yeah, because, like, you know, you could try a bunch of stuff. Like, I could try a bunch of new things now, mm-hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't fit anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, like, in my 20s, I probably would have been like, yeah, I'll try that out. Mm-hmm. But now it doesn't fit. Now yeah. I just I just want to do more of what works and what I'm good at mm-hmm. and then watch that grow mm-hmm. even more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that, that to lock in, bro, it was like... I still watch that Jordan documentary, mm-hmm. and I wa- I hear, listen to him talk, mm-hmm. and um, it's almost like I almost think I took Jordan's like mentality too literally, <laughs> and yeah, and I and I'm really that way, like yeah. not maybe not so much as he is, but I yeah. mean, I really literally took his mentality to heart, and yeah. I was like, then if if this is the only way you can win, then this is how I got to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, I get it. I get it. And you know, sometimes you know it, it creates enemies or whatever. But you know, I it ain't. It's like George is like I'm not, I'm not 
doing it to be, you know, like an asshole. No, no, it's no, just, you just want to win. Right. Yeah, you just want to win. And as long as everybody understands that, right, then we're okay. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, ultimately, at the end of the day. Um, and that's a very, that, and that's something, you know, take away from you, but even just when we discuss Jordan, we bring him up. Uh, it takes a specific kind of person and a spe- specific kind of team to be around someone with that kind of energy and that kind of mindset. Right. Because you have to adapt to that kind of energy if you're not used to being around it, you know. Right. So, but it, but the one thing about that energy though is it can be infectious in a positive way, yep. right? Because then you you cause those around you who do want to win to, to re- yeah. it reminds them like, hey, this is why we're doing it, right? You know, and yeah. we do need to lock in and we do need to, yeah, you know, gather ourselves and and, and point the ship in that direction and go for it. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. And then after reading that uh, Tim Grover book, that uh, Relentless book, oh, yeah. man, it almost topped it off even more. I'm like, so this is who Jordan learned from. And this guy's just as crazy. Yep. He is. You know, now, do you think because when people say crazy, right? So I, I don't know, man. Like, I believe there's when crazy kind of gets. Not, I don't want to say a bad rap, but some of the people that they say are crazy. I don't really think they're crazy. Right, quote unquote. right. Yes. It's just that they're extremely passionate about whatever it is that they're doing. Right. Or want to do. Right. right? Or the field that they're in. Yeah. And um, that mentality, that mindset, to me, and I always talk about balance on the show between like, you know, whether it be light and dark, but specifically yeah. re- referring to this, but right. learning how to use your dark side to your advantage so that yeah. in moments when you need that little extra edge, that little yeah. extra push, Tim Grover really talks about how that's why Jordan was successful. That's why Kobe was successful. Yeah. They were able to take that dark side, that dark part of you right. that has the anger, the frustration, your ego, all of that. Yeah. That wants to win. Direct that energy and put it into whatever it is you need to do right. to succeed. You know? No, yeah, that's true, man. Taking that. He he definitely did a great way of explaining it. Um, and then you know, those distractions, he he talks about those um, and how to avoid them. Distractions are tough, you know. To be honest with you, they're, they're tough. I mean, like, I'll use myself, for example. Um, I think because I don't have kids right now, yeah. it is easier for me to get distracted, Yeah, you know, with my own selfishness, right? So right. I, I'm not even saying, like, I got to be doing anything crazy, but right. I can I can take a day off. I can take a yeah. night off. Yeah, you know, I can I can go out and have a couple of drinks, right, and not have to worry about you know the fact that I got to be up early to take my kids to practice or right or to school or whatever the case is, right, right. So I've even had to kind of have some internal dialogue within myself to say, okay, knowing that I want to have kids, knowing that I want to have a family, et cetera, et cetera. What right. am I doing right now, right, that is potentially going to be a hindrance or could cause some issues later on down the road right and these aren't like bad things i mean it's not like, no yeah it's, it's not nothing bad, where, like you're like yeah. you know like you would really worry about you. It's, it's just there's there's certain examples i want to set for my kids right right and i know they're going to be watching me right and even the times like when i babysat my nephews or my nieces or you know when we're spending time with our goddaughter i catch myself flipping a switch yeah, like my um, my instincts come in, my fatherly instincts, I guess you could say, kind of come in, and I want to set a good example for them, and I want to try and be better when I'm around them, and I want to try and, you know, not make not necessarily mistakes, but just set a bad example for them, right. you know. And I think checking in with myself, man, has been able to kind of help me gauge how I want to be in the future, and I know there's yeah. some things that I need to fine tune, you know, yeah. and kind of um refurbish but it's not a, it's not an easy thing you know and i think no. i think the day when i do have children though i'll be able to just flip that switch because I've, I've i'm thinking about it i've been thinking right. about it you know and it's more or less just when that day comes it's go time right. you know yeah yeah as long as you're preparing yourself for that time to come mm. then i think it i think you'll be fine because mm-hmm. i mean a lot of a lot of it what it is is people aren't prepared for when it comes and right. then then what you know yeah. now now it's like now you got to go and learn while this is happening and it's right. 
you know, that's tough to do. Right. That's right, super right, tough right, to right, do. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And giving yourself some grace, man, in those moments where, where if you catch you, if you notice that you have vices, that you right. have distractions and something else, man, that we haven't mentioned yet, but I want to touch on this topic because I, I think there's more people that are dealing with addiction than they even, re- than we even realize or that they even realize. Right. You can be addicted to something and not even know. Oh, you could be addicted yeah. to watching too much TV. TikTok. You could be exactly you could be addicted <laughs> to being on your phone too yeah. much. Yeah. Um, there's so many other addictions other than just drugs or alcohol. Right. You know. Right. But make sure you check in with yourself, man. Right. And really, 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 if you ca- if you find yourself spending too much time doing something that really isn't benefiting you, right? Maybe maybe it's time to peel back a little bit. Yeah. Know? No, I agree. Cause I, and I think it's all about. You know, we talk about health, and and we haven't really dove into um, that topic specifically yet. Mm-hmm. But we we touch on it, and I think the other thing people miss out is, yeah, you can go to the gym, and that's great, but you also gotta have a healthy mind. Like, what are you feeding your mind every day? Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, people fear TikTok, and there is it's like with anything, there's good and bad. Mm-hmm. But I saw this I saw this video, and this guy talked about how he's already programmed his tiktok to only show because it's all about what you like true what are you clicking on true so now he programmed when he turns on tiktok it's like mindset stuff Mm -hmm. financial advice Mm -hmm. um things like that Mm -hmm. like in that case tiktok's not bad right because you're feeding your mind with things and getting you into like the right frame of mind to either start your day or end your day whatever or like in the middle of your day yep you know, and and when he said that, I was like, man, yeah, TikTok made me. You shouldn't be on the on the phone for hours, but mm-hmm. but if you're using it like that, mm-hmm. then you're fine. Yeah. Then yeah, it's I mean, not a vice. It's not a vice because you're only going there to 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 help feed your mind, to help grow, mm-hmm. open your mind up to new things, inspire you, whatever the case may be. So I think you have to use that, use it in that way. You no, know. No, it's true, bro. That's true, and that goes for all those social media websites. Yeah, um, and I think it, I think it's definitely tougher though for younger generations. Yeah, because it's for our generation and and even, but I don't know though, man. Cause I think it's everybody. I was gonna say, man, I, I have some older <laughs> customers that I mean, they yeah. uh, they're on the phones a lot. I'm I'm shocked. I'm shocked at how how it's entertainment. Yeah, no, yeah, like the games and stuff that they play on. Yep. There, like they'll sit there and play a game maybe while I'm cutting their hair while they're yeah. in the waiting area. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just something I've noticed. Right. You know. So. No, yeah, man. Technology can be our friend, or it can be the enemy. You know, it's our yep. choice. It's yep. our choice ultimately. All right, back from the break. Cool. But um, but yeah, to add to that, cause oh, you were mm-hmm. saying like you know people um. You know, you got clients on their phone and stuff like that. Um, I did have to change up like my morning routine, uh-huh. quote unquote. Uh huh. You know, um, and I picked this up from somebody else was, you know, not getting on your phone the first thirty minutes of you being awake. Okay. And I, after doing it for a while, mm-hmm. you know, I did realize that. Being off my phone for those first 30 minutes allows you to gather your thoughts, allows you to whatever, make your coffee, eat your breakfast, or whatever the case may be. You get 30 minutes to yourself. Because once you open that phone, it's like the world begins. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who who texted me? Who called me? What emails do I have? Yeah. Uh, you know, check your bank account. You yep. know, you got to uh, check your social media, yeah. see who tagged you, yeah. or whatever yeah, the case yeah. may be. Like the world just begins in rapid pay, at a rapid pace. And you know something that's interesting that I just thought about as you said that. Yeah. Talking about our vices and distractions, that's also an addiction, right? Yeah. The moment you open your phone, it's releasing dopamine into your brain. Yep. You're getting that hit, and then you yep. check your social media, you check your bank, you check whatever it is. Right. Dopamine, 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 dopamine. dopamine. So then your brain says, okay, I want more of this. Mm -hmm. So the idea of going to the gym or the idea of reading that book or whatever the case is goes way Mm -hmm. into the back of your head. Oh yeah, it's gone. Doesn't exist in that, in that space and time that you're, that you're in. And then like you said, 45 minutes can go by. Yeah. An hour can go by. You're like, damn, I got to go to work. Yeah. Or like, I didn't even eat. Yeah. 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 So I, I definitely, 
pick that up and and change that up about myself and and i mean at most if i really want to touch my phone then i'll turn on a podcast there you go something. and then at least i touched my phone i touched an app like if i if it's that itchy well at least i went to the podcast app and i pressed play yeah. and then i put my phone down and now it's, you know i got somebody talking to me yeah so but at least it's like something you know worth feeding your mind because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um you know your body needs breakfast but so does your mind Mm -hmm. You know, so depending on what you're feeding it in the morning, if it's TikTok entertainment, think of it as candy. Yeah. You're yeah. eating candy for breakfast with a, a large Coke. It's a great way to put it. It really and, is. You know, so, uh, yeah, I think I think if people start to switch that up a little bit, it's hard to do because it was tough. Mm. But it was it takes like 66 days to create a habit. So something like that. Yeah. 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 Something like that. So I think that's big, man. That's big. Yeah. And really, man, you're also talking about something. There's a book that I that I read. Um, I'm about halfway through it called Outwitting the Devil mm. by Napoleon Hill. Oh, right? so Napoleon Hill. Yeah. It's the same guy who wrote Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. Um, and the concept of the devil, right, is, you know, it depends on what you believe in. Right. 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 Um, but in this book, it talks about the devil is something that it's not necessarily a negative thing yeah per se right it's right. more or less a part of of life in yeah. a healthy and negative way at times or it may seem like it's negative but actually it may be healthy for you yeah. so the inner dialogue that you have with yourself is really the most important conversation that you're ever going to have yeah. right how you talk to yourself means right. everything if you allow that little voice to say things like, hey, pick up your phone, yeah. go on social media. <laughs> and you just sit there and you say, okay, yeah, every time. Yeah. And you never go, wait a minute, who, wait, who's in control here? Right. Me or my thoughts? Right. Right? Me or the devil, quote unquote, right? right? Metaphorically speaking. Right. Because there's always those, and we've talked about this multiple times with different guests on yeah. our podcast, but there's always those intrusive thoughts yeah. that are constantly trying to talk you out of being the best version of yourself. Right. They're constantly trying to talk you out of making good decisions that are beneficial for you. Right. And it's not even necessarily because uh, your brain or your body doesn't want to be better. Right. It's just your brain or your body is used to you being in a state of comfort. Right. 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 Of not having to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Right. So, hey, if I can, if I can just... So, you know, excuse my excuse my language, but right. if I can just mind fuck myself right. into not doing, not going to the gym or not reading that book, right. then I feel better. I feel I feel more comfortable being on my phone scrolling, right. scrolling, and not doing that stuff because that stuff is challenging. That stuff is going to force me yeah. to grow. So now right. I'd rather do this over here. You know? Do you think they feel free then at that point in their comfort state? Yes and no. Yes and no. I think in the mo in the moment, if we're all being completely honest with ourselves, right. there are, there have all been moments in our lives where we either looked ourselves in the mirror or we were just sitting there on the couch or wherever. Yeah. Um, and you said to yourself, "Man, I I could be doing better." Right. I could be doing better now. You may not have said it out loud. You may yeah. not have said it to anybody, but you said it to yourself. Right. I could be doing better. Right. And then usually the next follow up question is, "Well, what can I do?" You know, to get right. better. Right. And then that's where it really starts. That's where that's just having that that little question within yourself is where right. it really starts. Um, but ultimately, you you have to put a not a big plan, but a small plan. Right. Into action on how to achieve that. Right. But it, it just it seems it seems like, you know, we, we talk about different generations, too, man. The younger generations, they're definitely more hooked on the technology. They're def definitely more hooked on being distracted, on yeah. on being comfortable. Um, yeah. They don't really want to work as hard uh, right. to achieve some of the things that, you know, older generations or generations that came before them have achieved. And right. you can't really bl you can't really blame them. No, it's not their fault. But but they do need to realize and recognize that, hey, anything you want to have in life and that freedom that you that you do want to have. Right. Is going to require you to talk to yourself in a positive way. Right. To outwit the devil. Yeah. And to to stay away from complacency you know yeah yeah i think that's the biggest killer man yeah, yeah. the biggest yeah. killer yeah. people are like oh, i'm good oh yeah i mean and are you really right is a question 
Like, are you for sure? Like, right, hundred percent. Right, 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 right. You right, know, right. it's tough, man. Because then a person, okay, like when, when we when we ask if a person is really good, what does happiness mean to that person? Right. If freedom right. is what they're chasing, does does is happiness involved in that? Right. right. Because there's people out there, man, that are, and I'm not, and it's not, you know. A person can be homeless and be happier than a person that works a nine to five every day. Because even though that person who's works a nine to five today may be making money, right? Maybe they don't like their job. Maybe right. they don't like the house that they bought. Right. Maybe they don't even like the family that they created. Not in a disrespectful right. way. Right. But the fact that maybe they married the wrong person. Right. Maybe there was somebody that, that doesn't really have their back. Right. And maybe their kids don't respect them. Right. That could be hell. Yeah. They could have everything. From the outside looking in, this person could have everything. But on right. the inside, they could be in a prison. They didn't they may not they may not be free right. on the inside. You right. Know? Homeless person, for example. Right. Is going on a day to, through day to day was yeah. just was just wanting to get fed. Right. And have a place to sleep. And occasionally run into somebody, and maybe have a, a genuine conversation. And for that person, he's he or she could be just as free, if not freer. Right. So it really goes back to like what we said in the beginning too. What do you want? Right. What does happiness? What does freedom mean to you? Do you need the mansion, or do you? Right. Can you? Are you okay with a ranch home? Are right. you okay with some land? Uh, right. Do you need a, a Mercedes Benz G wagon, or are you okay with you know a, a Honda Civic? It's it's whatever you want. Yeah. You know. And I think I I mean I think in today's world I don't think anybody's really okay with the other side. You know, like yeah. with less. Yeah. I yeah. mean, think about it. I mean, we you see some of these TikToks and we talked we had like that episode with modern day relationships and lifestyle and mm-hmm. you know what men have to do these days. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I don't think less is an option. No anymore. It's not. No, not necessarily. You know, it's not, it's not. Yeah, it's not. But what is more, though, in your right? And, you know, because yeah, what is more? <laughs> yeah, because at some point, man. You know, and this is something I try to remind myself of is, man, I could have a billion dollars, but if I don't have friends and family around me that love me and care about me and that are looking forward to seeing me, I don't have nothing, man. I don't have nothing. Yeah, you just by yourself then at that point. Just alone. Because, you know, and I use, let's use Tom Brady real quick for an example, right? Tom Brady is one of the greatest athletes that have ever existed on the planet. He's been extremely successful. But right now, he's went through a divorce. He retired. Yeah. I'm sure he's got a real nice mansion right now. Right. But you know how alone that man must be? But on the on the inside. I mean, when he's alone yeah. by himself. Absolutely. Now, I'm not talking about when, you know, he's he's out and he's socializing and he's doing right. different events and stuff like that. And I, I don't want to ass- I'm not assuming these things, right? Cuz right. I don't I don't I don't know, but just from the outside looking in and just thinking about it, Man, if I if I got divorced from my wife, my kids now are of the age where they don't really want to hang out with with dad right. anymore because they're they're old enough now where they want to be around their friends. Right, they right. Want to right. have fun with yeah, their eventually friends. Eventually they, they go away. Yeah, eventually they got to fly away and do their yeah. own thing. Right. Yeah. And so now he comes home and he's like, "Hey, dad's home." Right. Where's everybody at? Right. Nowhere to be found. All he's got is a bunch of hardware on his fingers, his rings, rings, and yeah, he can watch his highlight tapes. But then what ha- what happens, bro? When you know, you're sitting there by yourself, yeah. man. And I think he made a bad empty. choice to come back. I agree. I think. Um, I agree. I think for t- I think that was the the difference between him and Jordan is Jordan left, even though jo- Jordan got divorced too, obviously. Mm. But um, with Tom Brady, he had like the option. Mm. I don't know Jordan's story too much, mm. but she told him like, "I don't want you to play anymore." Yeah, and. Like for Tom, like I, I was like, man, what, what else do you really want, man? Like exactly. you, you've won, I don't know how many times. What has he won? Six, seven, seven. Yeah, you won seven Super Bowls at the highest level. At the highest level, and you're like forty. Yep. Like, I don't, I don't know if, like, it was just like it was time to go. But that, but that's it though. He wanted more. So, so wanting more sometimes can be a bad thing, right? You know, sometimes less. Is right. more in that way because he well he already had it, exactly. and I think that's where like some people lose sight. Like you already have it, and then, but like Russ used to say, mm-hmm. 
you know, he overlooked all his achievements and what he created mm-hmm. because he was still on the hustle, on the grind. Mm-hmm. Like he was fresh in the league. Right, right, right. You know, right, like right, you right, weren't right. fresh in the league no more. Right. Time, it was time to go. Right. You know, like, no, yeah. like yeah. they, your family told you it's time to go. Yeah. Like it should have been, all right, I'm done. Yeah. You know. And that's tough, man, because you, you got to say to yourself, man, what, what do you what do you say to your children when they look you in the eye when they're older? And yeah. they say, like, Dad, yeah, I'm glad that you won all those rings. And I remember being there and taking the photos and everything. Right. But what about my baseball game? Right. You weren't there. Yeah. You weren't there. Yeah. What does Tom Brady say in a moment like that? If that's a conversation that one day his son or sons have right. with him. Right. No, what, that's How true. does he respond? You know, you can't respond. Yeah, because I have this t- I have this conversation with guys at work, you know, and um, you know, you could chase the the career accolades, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but they always like these guys tell me like, you know, what is, what is mo- you have to ask yourself what's more important. This was at a at when I first got hired. Okay, so you got to ask yourself what's more important: your retirement party, or what your kids are gonna say when you get older. Ooh, and that's tough mm-hmm. because. As we've talked about, to chase your career and to achieve to get the to the most the, the highest level in a corporate setting, mm-hmm. you have to give up something, exactly. and it's normally the family. Yep, because it yep. requires hours and time, and then you got to hang out with these people, yep. you know. And when he told me that, I was just like, I don't care about a damn retirement party. I don't yeah. <laughs> Like, of, yeah. like I, I do not care about that. Yeah. You know, I don't like whatever I, I achieve at work is cool. But if my daughter ever said like what you just said, mm-hmm. I don't know what I think I would. I would feel like shit, bro. Yeah, man. Cause there, it's you a would gut have punch. to. It's a gut punch. Uh-huh. If you if you're if you're not if you're not uh, too egotistical. Right. Because like an egotistical parent in that moment will say, well, I gave you everything I didn't have. And you know, right. I I spent money on the best trainers, and they're like, "What more do you want from me?" Right? But it, but in those moments, a kid is just, a kid just wants your time. They just want your yeah. love, and they yeah. just want your attention, right? Yeah. And I think ultimately, children want to be seen. They want to yep. felt like they've been seen, especially by their parents. Oh yeah. I think man. that's why a lot of kids that either grew up without either either of their parents yeah. or or one or the other, they feel this hole in them because they feel like. They don't have a sense of belonging. Yeah. You know, and it's 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 messed up. man. Yeah. You would never want to see a kid go through that. But, no. you know, like we're talking about, man, freedom and, and what what's too much. Right. You know, is less more. Right. And is it more important to make sure that your friends, your family, that your home, right. you know, uh, uh, what's it uh, always vibing? What is uh, what is DJ Vestas always says? Uh, take care of home first or something like yeah, that along yeah. that line. Yeah. I yeah, believe yeah. it's something that he mentioned in yep. the pod. But. It's true, man. It really yeah. is true. And I've had that dilemma, like, and you know, you, you, me, other people that I've had this conversation with, knowing that, you know, in the future that, yeah, we'll be a family man, et cetera. I think about this kind of stuff a lot. Yeah, you have to, man. A lot, man. A lot. I don't, I don't want my children to, to ever say that, you know, man, you didn't love us or right. you didn't, you didn't teach us enough right i don't don't ever want them to say that no yeah the biggest piece of advice i was given from a a family friend it was a neighbor Mm -hmm. he said when i had Aaliyah, he said uh she'll never remember the gifts you bought her but she will remember if you took her to the park man and i was dude i was 21 and that stuck with me till now so when he told me that and then when the guy at work told me that it was an easy decision for me because now it came from multiple people. Obviously, my yeah. dad, too. Yeah. But um, it just came from multiple people. And, a lot, that I mean, for me to you, that would be the biggest piece of advice I can give you because I know. It's great advice. You know, you're gonna come, you're, there's going to come a time where barbering and family, you may have to make some changes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you work, yeah. you know, for example, you work Saturdays. Yep. Games are on Saturdays. What are happening. you gonna do? Yep, I'm going to the game. Right. No, no questions asked. I'm yeah. Going to the game. So now it's like, for you, you would have to start preparing. Yeah. You got. I mean, you got like what seven? You know, maybe five, seven years from the time you have a kid before mm-hmm. you start like really playing sports. Right. 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 right but right. um, you know that that'd be something for you to start thinking about. It's mm-hmm. like, 
and that's the goals for anybody too man like if you're what what is what you're chasing turning you into you know is, is if your career is gonna if that's what you're chasing yeah what all is it affecting yeah money if that's what you're chasing what is that how is that affecting your stuff yeah you know no, and man. then you know family if you're chasing to just be home with the family well you know what is what is that turning you into mm-hmm. you know it's it's all stuff to think about no it is man it is and long term right if we're all fortunate enough to live a long happy healthy life right let's say we're fortunate enough to because my grandmother turned 90 uh a few weeks ago hey shout right? out grandma shout out, shout out granny you know? granny 90 90 bro and when i think about that if i'm able to live that long it's a lot of, that's a lot of life we it's might have to have gra- we might have to have granny on here man if if we have hey. granny on the podcast she uh <laughs> I love my grandma, but I I mean she would she's a sweetheart. It would yeah. it would be a good episode. It would be a good episode. Yeah. But maybe we'll know, just granny, get the stories and bring them in here. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that would be that would be sweet, man. That would be sweet. She would she would be so she'd be so happy. You know, she would be so thrilled. She wouldn't know oh, what's going on, but she'd love every second like, of it. Yo. <laughs> Well, Graham, just like, talk, yeah, talk to this thing right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell us your whole life story real yeah. quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, man, you know, it's if we're able to live that long, we're going to see a lot more life, man. Yeah. We're going to make a lot, you know, a lot of good decisions, a few bad decisions, right. hopefully. Right. And we move for it. We learn from it. But, man, to be able to to make it to that age and to be able to look back and see what you've built. Right. See how your family has grown. To me, that's everything. To me, oh, that's yeah. legacy. Yeah. You know, I rather than leaving behind a billion dollars for my family and leaving behind generational wealth, right. I want to leave behind morals, values, and principles that yeah. stick around for eternity. Right. Because to me, those things are worth more than gold. Oh, things yeah. that my father, that my grandfather, that my mentors, that you know, my friends, the conversations yeah. that we've had, all that stuff means way more to me than a billion dollars ever would. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. No, I I agree with that because I'm sure when your grandma sits there and and looks, you know, looks at you, your brother, mm-hmm. you know, what's all happened. Mm-hmm. You know, wait till you have kids. I mean, I look and think about my grandparents, and you know, they came to Aaliyah's basketball game the other day. Oh wow! And you know, to for them to see like, you know, first my mom, then yeah. they saw me play. Yeah. Now they see Aaliyah play. Yeah. I mean. I mean, I, I I hope, like you said, I hope I get there one day. Yeah. You know, and see, like, yeah. man, I remember. <laughs> yeah, because that'll be a different part of life, a completely different perspective. Different. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you just be thankful just to be. Yeah. Be there. I'm sure the same way that I'm sure they were just thankful. Yep. Just to be there. Yeah. Because you know? that's yeah. four generations, right? Yeah, it's my, so my mom, me. Or three. Three. Right, Aaliyah. three generations from them, yeah. 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 Shh. Three right there. That is dope, man. Yeah. That and is dope. It's a blessing, man. Truly, truly yep. a blessing, you know. Yeah. Truly a no, blessing. No, definitely. Yeah, I mean, so to so to recap, Cuzzo, mm-hmm. you know, freedom is the goal for everybody. I would mm-hmm. say. I think mm-hmm. we can all come to some type of agreement in that. And uh, limiting your distractions to mm-hmm. a, to get that freedom, mm-hmm. and then just being mindful of whatever it is you're chasing, mm-hmm. involving that freedom, mm-hmm. what it's turning in, turning you into. Mm-hmm. And what are you really sacrificing? Mm-hmm. You know? And these are things you should probably all write down. Yeah. Put it on paper or put yeah. it in your notes in your phone. So that way you can look back at it and kind of hold yourself accountable and just check in. Check in constantly with yourself to see like, okay, yeah, I, uh, you know, this is this is where the, this, the, these are the things that are, are hindering me. But these yeah. are the things that I want to go after and just kind of use that as a little... Uh, guidance if you will yeah definitely write it down i uh um i did take on not really well because it's kind of weird for me still Mm. to try to journal Mm -hmm. it's in my phone Mm -hmm. but um the one of the books i read talked about doing that you know like just talking about like recapping your week your Mm -hmm. month Mm -hmm. you know your year Mm -hmm. you know i haven't been to keep i've only done it you know a little bit but Mm -hmm. it you know it's a to write it all down, mm-hmm. your thoughts, it, it's mm-hmm. kind of nice to put it down and then you yeah. read it and you're like, oh, okay, all right, I said it, you know, it's kind of cool. And yeah. Then, and it also kind of helps get it off your mind, right? Yeah. Because of what I've realized about myself is I sometimes, man, a lot, well, I should say a lot of the times I feel like a, I feel like a computer that's got a bunch of tabs 
open. <laughs> you know, well, I've got yeah. all this stuff running in the background. And when you write it down, now you're removing those tabs. And then it's right one there. by one. And then it's there. And then you can look at it and you can go back to it. Yo. You know, and your brain doesn't feel so crowded. Yeah. You know, Cause that's that's I think that's something that I think a lot of people, actually, if they're willing to admit it, you know, kind of feel that. way. Oh, yeah. I feel know? like that all the time. So, like, I try to write it down and then go back and review it, like you said. Like, mm-hmm. even goals. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about all the goals people have, and then you're like, man, what was that goal I said I was going to do? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just write it down. Yeah. Put it in your notes. No, it's true. It's put true, your phone. It's true. Oh, something else I wanted to mention, too, Kuzo, yeah. is that, you know, we've done, we, we've officially, after, was it, was Rakia's episode, episode 10? Or uh, ju- was Justin, Jason, Justin's? No, wait, wait. I'll tell you right now. No, Rakia's 10. Rakia's 10? Rakia's 10. Okay, so. Rakia's 10. One thing that we wanted to do on behalf of the Electors Podcast, man, is also thank every single one of you guys that have yep. watched and listened to our episodes. We we honestly, it's it's been very humbling. Um, yeah. We started this with the intention of wanting to put out genuine content, authentic content that just... Um, people could digest and enjoy and hopefully learn something from. And all the feedback that we've been getting back from you guys is truly, truly, truly taken in with nothing but love. Um, I can't thank you enough to the people that have come up to us off the street and said something to us, whether they watched it or, you you know, giving us words of encouragement, whatever the case is. Thank you um, to our friends and our family. We appreciate you guys supporting us. It really means a lot. Yeah, truly definitely. from the bottom of our hearts. Definitely. Yeah. So, but yeah, I just wanted to add that in, man. And uh, we're just going to continue to keep doing our best, man. And episode after episode, give you guys what we feel like is is good content. Yep. And uh, hopefully you continue to watch and enjoy everything that we're putting together. We got a lot more guests coming up. Yeah, man. we do. We do. There's we more, some pretty- definitely more guests. And if you got anybody you want to tag who you yeah. think should be on here. Yeah. yeah. Um, please send it to us. Send it to our electives page on Instagram. Yep. Or uh, or TikTok even, and uh, we'll tap in with them. We'll see if we can get them on the show. Cause yeah, it, even topics too. You know, we uh, we're we're open to a lot of topics. So I mean, uh, definitely send those through, and we can review them for sure. Um, and you know, we can touch as many things as we can, and uh, you know, for the topics we're not too experienced on, we just bring somebody on, you know? True. No, true. You yeah. know, drop, we don't the, have all drop the that knowledge. Yeah, no. You ain't got the answer, Sway. <laughs> yeah, you you ain't got the answer, Sway. <laughs> oh, no, man, man, that's funny. But, yeah, thank you guys again. We always, like I said, we we always appreciate positive feedback. Uh, even some of the, not, it hasn't been negative feedback, but some of the constructive criticism, criticism that we've gotten, we've taken it in. Yep. So we appreciate that as well. So with that being said, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We will definitely see you guys on the next episode. Peace. Peace. Peace.